Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with hosts Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Search for us on your favorite podcast app, or you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so we can spread the word. If you would like to support us and get exclusive rewards, go to patreon.com slash speaking out. Find a tier that best fits you and join as a patron of the podcast. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's episode with host Jimmy Hinton and Jimmy's mom, Clara. And we thank you to our patrons who make this podcast possible. And we urge you, if you listen and you love it, um, sign up, become one of our patrons. It's as easy as one click and uh, choose a tier you want, the benefits you want, and you will help support and maintain this podcast and keep it going. Uh, This week's episode, episode 154, Are My Kids Safe at the Doctor? Checklist. Last week it was Are My Kids Safe at Church. This week, Are My Kids Safe at the Doctor? Checklist. Um, So uh, in keeping with last week's episode, we have a checklist of um, six things. Right. Uh, We'll go through, and again, this is not a comprehensive list, but we think probably the most essential and important uh, things that you can check. It's a good guide, for sure. I think very good, and I wish I wish I had had this years ago, to be honest. So do I. Well, so do I, for sure. And we didn't even get into vaccines on this list. No. Maybe we should add a few. No. (laughs) No. That's a hot topic. I know. I kid. I kid. Vaccines are, that's that's your business. Yeah. So number one, um, does the doctor allow me to be in the same room as my child? I am constantly surprised and shocked at the number of people, the number of parents who send me emails anytime that I mention doctors or or write blogs about doctors mm-hmm. and they say well my doctor does is adamant will not let me be in the same room as my child is that normal no that's not normal no and that blows me away because nor is it acceptable right even back when you kids were little that's before any of this stuff was even on our radar at all one of the first things I made sure was that I could be in the room with your kids. Yeah. I mean, that was just, I mean, that's how it was. If that's nothing all. else, that's common sense. Right. I could not imagine leaving my child in the room alone with a doctor. Just yeah. couldn't. Well, I, I, could not. I mean, people people ask me the question, well, what do, what do I do if my doctor, my pediatrician, yeah. we love our pediatrician, but he won't allow me to be in the same room as my kid when he does examinations. What do I do? Leave. Right. Find another doctor. Yep, find another Walk doctor. out the door exactly and say it. thanks, but yep. no thanks. I'll right. take my business elsewhere right. where they have a better policy that I'm allowed in the same room as my kid. That is absolutely nonsense. I see nonsense. no reason why. None. Right. Why a parent should not be in the room with right. a child. No reason. Well, I remember, I mean, when I interviewed Judge Aquilina, um, she talked about gymnastics and she said that, you know, there was a sign where her kids, um, her kids were going to gymnastics and they had a sign up. Once you enter this door, parents are not permitted. She said, you know what I did? I pushed that door open and I walked right back in where my kids are because it's my right. She's like, it's my legal right. Um, It's my right as a parent. And she said, nobody is responsible for my kids except for me. And that's true. Now I'm I'm smiling because that was policy when um, your sisters were in dance, Mm -hmm. that parents were not permitted in in the room however they had a walk around window with everything opened up i mean i sat glued there for every well, i think that's okay saturday yeah. yes where i mean I, I mean and it was just because kids would go running to their mom they were right, little you know right right but there there were chairs all the way around the arena type of room we were there glued every parent was mm-hmm. there glued watching their children that's so different than saying yeah. no you're not allowed back here at and all leave, and they close know, the door yeah, and go no, into an examination we were, i would room never have committed that no no but, um, it's not right. okay no it's not uh number two does the doctor slash staff allow me to have a good field of view the entire time 
it's not okay to just be allowed in the room, right. but do they give you a good like that? Do they give you yeah, a good field of absolutely. view? Absolutely. 360 yeah. degrees. Yep. Yes. yes. And For think sure. about Larry Nasser or locally here, uh, Johnny Bardo, uh, same thing. Um, he was a pediatri pediatrician who abused hundreds of victims. Um, the vast majority of those victims, he did allow the parents in the room. Mm -hmm. Larry Nasser yeah, I know. welcomed I the parents about, in the room. I thought about that, yeah. And still abused the kids. Full on uh, digital penetration. Right. Larry Nasser and Johnny Bardo, uh, full vaginal and anal penetration with their fingers while having casual conversations right. with the parents. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to be allowed in the room. Um, you have to have a good field of view the entire time. And you have to know where the doctors and nurses' hands and fingers, all mm -hmm. 10 fingers right. are at all times. If they block your view, get up and move and walk around Wait. and reposition yeah. yourself where you can see. And you know, like like I say, Jimmy, when you kids were all young, I never thought of a doctor ever doing anything that most people like don't. This, right. Yeah. However, old country doctor, Dr. Hay, I remember him from the very first visit we had. He told me to stand right at the head of your kids and let you kids hold my hands mm -hmm. like that. So I was seeing over each of you as he did the exam, and he would tell me step by step. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to feel their abdomen for whatever mm -hmm. distension. I'm going to touch this. I'm going to do that. As I was holding their hands, and I could see full on. That right. was great. That was, you know, I felt safe, and you kids felt safe. Yeah. So. I, I mean, I talk about this, and it, and it's, I mean, this is not placing blame on the parents whatsoever, um, because they just, they didn't know. I mean, they were present. Um, they were in the room. They were we um, very good people. parents. We trust uh, people in authority, uh, doctors, nurses, sure. teachers, preachers. We, we right. trust them. So it's not their fault, but I, you know, I make this point when I do trainings, none of those victims, absolutely zero of those victims could have been victimized in the way that they were victimized had the parents seen and known mm -hmm. where both right. hands and right. all 10 fingers were at all 10 times, at, at all times. You have to be able to see there are zero excuses for that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not being weird. That's not being... Um, inappropriate. Uh, you have to understand the dynamics of how abusers right. think yeah. and operate. Uh, Larry Nasser, Rachel Denhollander wrote about this in her book. Um, she said, you know, Nasser was having conversations, casual conversations with with me and my mom about my science homework mm -hmm. as he's penetrating I, her. It, it just makes me sick inside to think about that. Um, and some people might be thinking, well, why didn't she speak up or why doesn't a child speak up a child you're paralyzed no right right and right a number of things a child doesn't know what this exam should be mm -hmm. like number one number two that child is trusting number three what are you going to say i mean if there's a fear thing right? sure there's a absolutely that's a fear that's a paralyzing fear yep it's you terrible. cannot expect the kids no. to speak up no. when they're being abused no. As, and if they don't know they're if being they abused if they don't know right you can't expect it no um number three do they communicate does the doctor communicate well with your child and you during examinations um i remember uh one of the examinations for my sons they were the, the she was a pa and she needed to, to check his testicles to see if they dropped. And she explained that. She said, okay, dad, I'm going to I'm gonna pull his pants out in a little bit with mm -hmm. his permission. Um, I'm going to explain to him in a second what I'm doing. And she said, I need to check his testicles to make sure that they dropped. Um, she said, uh, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to pull the, I'm going to pull the pants down just a little bit. Um, I'm going to reach up. I'm going to take my finger. Like she was very, very thorough, um, thorough with how she explained it. Right. And yeah. then she explained it to him. And, uh, you know, she got down on his level and she said, now in a little bit, I'm going to pull your pants down just as I explained to your dad. Mm -hmm. And she said, nobody is ever allowed to do this to you. Mm -hmm. Nobody is ever allowed to look at your privates or to ask to see your privates or mm -hmm. to touch your privates unless 
it's a doctor or somebody like that who's doing an examination where where we're checking you out. Um, but we also need your permission. And your mm-hmm. parents always have to know if somebody is touching your privates. Mm-hmm. And we need their permission. Wow. So she what went, I mean, she was that. incredibly that's, thorough. That's an incredible person. I was so yeah. impressed. Mm-hmm. That is by the way that she yes. handled that, and he was just like, "Okay." Yeah. And then she mm-hmm. asked him. She said, mm-hmm. "Is it okay now if I pull your pants yeah. down?" She said, yeah. "I'm just going to poke with two mm-hmm. fingers." She said, "It's going to be very quick, and then I'll pull your pants wow. back up." Wow. And he looked at me, and you know, mm-hmm. he nodded his head, and and then he said, "Yes, yeah. it's okay." And then she said, "Okay, Dad, is it okay mm-hmm. if I pull your son's pants down now?" Yeah. The way that I explained. Wow. I mean, that's she was that thorough. Be. Well, that's how it should. It was be incredible. Yeah. That's how it should be. So, you know, do Mm -hmm. doctors communicate well with Mm -hmm. both your child and you? And do they seek permission from both you and Mm -hmm. your child? Um, That's so important. It's very important. Or do they just, you know, do they kind of roughhouse your kid Mm -hmm. and, you know, assume that, you know, don't explain anything. And then next thing your kids are naked. That's so weird to a kid. It is awful. Yes, it is. It's scary. You know? It is. Especially if they've been abused by somebody before. I can't imagine. And now all of a sudden there's an adult pulling their pants down in front of mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And mom and dad aren't saying a word about it. Yeah. It messes with their mind. Sure it would. Yeah. So communication is really Mm -hmm. vital. Right. Uh, Number four, do they allow parents to be present the entire time for procedures requiring anesthetics? Now, I want to talk about anesthetics for a little bit because there are article after article after article after article about doctors who wildly abuse patients sexually and otherwise, um, both adult and child, when they're under anesthesia. That's scary. Anesthetics. you're extremely vulnerable. Oh, you're yeah. 100% mm-hmm. at the mercy you are. of yeah. the doctor in charge. I hate when you're about under. that. I hate, there are certain things that just really, uh, I hate thinking you know? about it. Yeah. But it happens over and over and over. Yeah. And not just sexually, but you know, there are videos where, uh, in articles about doctors and nurses that, you know, they'll take magic markers and they'll, or, you know, mm. dry erase markers and they'll, right draw all kinds of stuff all over them and they're they're filming them with their cell phones and making fun of the patients Mm -hmm. um man parents have to have to have to have to have to be present any and every time that their child is going under Mm -hmm. that's that's a tricky one because i don't know jimmy or legally i mean with the hospitals are parents allowed they, I, 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 I assume know. they are, uh, I, according I to know. according to what uh, Judge Aquilina said. Uh, adults who are in the charge of a child. of a minor child are never legally permitted to isolate that child. The reason I'm away asking is, I was at the dentist um, not too long ago with two of the grandkids and there was another child there about six years old that needed a tooth extraction they were going to put this child under because Mm -hmm. it was a tricky extraction something when you know when the teeth started forming and all but mom and dad were told to wait out in the room where i was and i thought i wouldn't do it yeah and i i wouldn't do it thought i wonder why they can't be with that child to calm that child Mm -hmm. you know that's scary for a child number one number two that mom and dad were worried sick they just sat and wrung their Mm -hmm. hands and um they were out there the whole time and then the the nurse came back and got them and said okay we're finished you can come back and i will say i mean probably nine and a half times out of ten um doctors are not taking advantage or abusing um Mm. taking advantage of isn't the right word abusing uh, a patient i would say you know probably statistically nine and a half times out of ten they're not but um 
that other we don't want to be that or we don't want our child percent. to be that one right. right look at nasser look at bartow right look how many hundreds right. and hundreds were affected by that permanently affected and one so doctor can easily we, have hundreds right. of victims exactly all it so, takes is one bad doctor right. so uh, I, I mean i'm all for not good enough. I, I was thinking maybe there is a a room where they can view, you know, where how mm-hmm. medical students can view. So maybe that's... I would ask for accommodations. So if, yeah. if this were me and a doctor said, well, because of... Like, this is the latest thing with COVID. COVID amplified oh, abuse. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Amplified mm-hmm. it so much mm-hmm. because... Now, COVID was an excuse to say, well, you know, we're not allowing anybody right. in the room. I wasn't allowed to go in the room... With you know, know who I'm yeah, talking about, I do. Yeah. Um, a dear friend of ours, right? Who, oh. her daughter called me on the phone and she was awful. screaming. It, was awful. it sounded yeah. like a war zone, mm. screaming in pain, um, hours away from death, begging for me to be there. Mm. And you know what they told her? Not allowed. Not allowed. Yeah, not allowed. We have COVID restrictions yeah. and it it's non-negotiable. It's Only family members terrible. or the hospital is appointed chaplain. Mm. Never mind that, you know, you I could wear a mask. I know. I'm vaccinated. Mm. That didn't matter. Mm. Um, these policies are asinine. It's terrible. They're absolutely yeah. asinine and they're unacceptable. Terrible. I so, agree. Yeah. you know, a policy like that, I would... I would search everywhere until I found a mm-hmm. doctor who would allow me to be mm-hmm. present. Um, if not in the room, then they dang well better make a co- yeah. accommodations right. and say, okay, put up a plexiglass mm-hmm. window right. where I can see my child right. who's under, right, completely under mm-hmm. uh, anesthetics. Right. I want to be able to see exactly. this procedure. Yes. I think a lot of um, medical errors could be resolved that way also i think too. i would think yeah. the doctors would want would want that that kind yeah. of accountability i do but but i mean they're i mean think about technology though i mean with cameras you could do a live feed mm-hmm. i mean i wouldn't even have to be in the same room yeah, if no. they would put up a live well, feed that's what i was thinking now where i could see my child right, and just so you could view yeah, and what was being a view done. of what was being done right and they can do that for cheap i would supply the equipment mm-hmm. I know you, know what you I mean? would. You carry it all around I with know. you anyway. I love, I love my, my video equipment. I know you do. But, you know, the point is they've got to accommodate. And I think well, if... Parents are responsible. We are responsible for our child. And we, if they have policies... Are, that, right, exactly. We are responsible. No, not the doctor, not the nurse. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a degree of responsibility, but ultimately we have that burden yeah. of responsibility. And I think if you hear things like, well, you know, we have a, we have a great track record and this doctor is the, the you know, most trusted doctor. All the more reason why I need to be. in. Well, I was going to say, Dr. Bartow, I heard praises for years. Look at Larry that. Nasser, same yeah. thing. World yeah. renowned doctor. Right. Praises for was a he a trusted time. doctor? Right. Yeah, hundred percent. We have to really watch it. We yeah, really trust go. has nothing to do mm-hmm. with my presence in the room. Right, right. Exactly <laughs> you know, at right. the end of the day. Yep. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. And hit number five here. Okay. Never pass off the fear factor or that gut feeling that your child has about a doctor. If your child begins to cringe and scream and fuss and fight at the sight of a a doctor, pay attention to that. There's something that's not quite right. And we know that gut feeling or that feeling that overcomes us, we know it all too well and we know as adults to trust it. Mm -hmm. Well, kids have that that same feeling and if they were betrayed once, by that person they are going to recoil and they will remember they will be traumatized pay attention to that and don't take your child back to that person right and ask them use that as an opportunity to say what's you know i noticed that you know you you really seemed like you were anxious Ah. when we went in there is you know is there anything wrong yeah did anything happen um is there anything that makes you uncomfortable around this doctor Will children always tell us no? 
They won't always because they can't always verbalize sure. what they're feeling. But pay attention to that. I think right. that's critical. I really yeah. do. And um, that fear factor, um, when a child is that stressed, when like I love the example you had of your child with the doctor explaining everything, getting mm-hmm. down on eye level. She was saying fantastic. word for word what was going to happen. You were right there. Um, asking your permission, his mm-hmm. permission, both, you know, that's a scene. Gave that me a wide be, open field yeah. of view. She right. positioned herself where right. I could see everything. She wanted me to be able to see that. Never forget this one <laughs> dentist, and I, I don't believe at all that he would have abused um, your brother Mike in a sexual way, but he was pretty nasty. He was a dentist and Mike needed a filling. And this doctor did not believe in any numbing agents at all. Neither do I. (laughs) I I asked, I asked my dentist not to do it. I don't know. I had to, I had to get drilled. Uh, Oh, how do you And it was right into the nerve. Oh, And um, we have the same dentist and he's great. He is. He's awesome. He's He's retiring. Oh, that's too bad. I know. I just found that out this morning. Yeah, he was like, oh, are you sure <laughs> about this? Did he do it? Did yeah, he, he did, did it. He? He's like, oh. I, don't, I don't want to get punched halfway through. In <laughs> case. Me. He's like, say... I'm, I'm going to be right in that nerve. I was like, nope, go for it. I always say, give me extra <laughs> shots, please. <laughs> well, anyway, this doctor who is now deceased, thankfully, took Mike and just grabbed him by the shoulders. And he said, sit down like that. Well, you know what I did? It's bye bye doctor. I got Mike, yep. and I got out of there, and we were gone. Mm-hmm. That is not how you do. That right. is period. That right. is not that. Uh, that's not acceptable. Yeah. So I, I I found our dentist, by the way, that we yeah we he's both great. Have, yes, my kids he, all love him. Yes, he's, he's awesome. fantastic, and he yes. lets us in the room. He yeah, absolutely. Come on, pull up a chair. Yeah. Absolutely. He loves it. Yeah, yeah. they're they're great yes. in that office. Right. Um, Do your homework. I, I was yeah, going to say for six. all of us. I am now doing that a lot. I uh, When I have to go to a doctor for myself or I know a family member is going to someone, I look up online, mm-hmm. check reviews, check what people say. You know, that it's a good, gives you a good idea of what that doctor is like. Yeah. Because that gives us an opportunity to you know, voice our opinion. How was your visit with the doctor? Was the doctor a bully? Was Mm -hmm. he, uh, did he treat you well? Did he have a good bedside manner? Was there anything that you needed to share with others? Do your homework, people. Sometimes you And write a review yourself. And write a review. Good or bad. Yes. Write a review so that other people can know. Absolutely. Be fair. Yes. So that other people know. Mm -hmm. There, you would be surprised um, at the things that people right about a doctor mm-hmm. to let us know that's not a good doctor to go visit yep. and why they will tell you why so do your homework with that dig deep find yeah. out about your child's physician well i think about you know we're not living 20 years ago when right. you had to open up the yellow pages right and go down through and sift through you know and just eeny meeny miny mo and that's how we did that's how we did it too you know with the day of the internet mm-hmm. i mean you can find a review on any and every doctor out there. There's no excuse for not doing there your isn't. homework. I feel like that's one of the best gifts that that um, the internet has given yeah. us that we can do our homework. And it's free way. and it's quick. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So important. Um, there are some quack doctors out there there. are and and it'll tell you you know if this doctor has charges against him mm-hmm. or you know how many. Um, charges that doctor had are they cleared what's going on well i mean you said dig deep Mm -hmm. um i'm going to flesh that out a little bit because you know it's not just about going on a a review you know google reviews or whatever and saying oh well you know four and a half stars out of five sometimes you have to to look a little bit like in the case of johnny bardo johnny bardo lost his license his medical license were evoked in the 90s because there were allegations of sexual yes. abuse with patients in the 90s. Think about uh, I, I His license was revoked for what, like six months or something like that? It was. And that's like that. huge. That's a big, big, a big, big, deal. big thing. Big thing. But how many people really take the time or to dig that next I level? I never knew until he was convicted. Right. 
Right. None of us would. Instead, it's word of mouth that, hey, oh, my gosh, this doctor's wonderful. Or this. And he had great reviews. He, he did. He had great reviews. But dig deep means yeah. go that extra level or two. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so important. And I find this with um, sex offenders in the church. Um, I tell people it's not enough to get on the sex offender registry and see, oh, well, here's a convicted sex offender actually pull up the court dockets right. and dig really deep find mm -hmm. out i mean what happened you Why? know in the case of my dad he had 200 charges 197 out of the 200 were waived they disappeared they vanished i know and yeah. the only way you'll find them mm -hmm. is if you actually pull up the court docket and mm -hmm. then you're like oh my goodness right. he had multiple felonies mm -hmm. and i mean what over 180 misdemeanors yeah it was crazy crazy but you're you wouldn't right. know that you wouldn't know unless that you unless you dig deep you had to you dig a little dig deeper that, yeah go that extra level yeah for sure so you know these are our list of six again not a comprehensive list but i think these are probably the most essential that if if you have a note card that's kind of a cheat sheet put these six things on there you're going to be light years ahead mm -hmm, of the sure. average parent right. who's taking their kids blindly to the doctor and getting the runaround and right. saying, well, you're not allowed. It's our policy. You're not allowed in the room. How many parents are just like, oh, okay. Right. They don't even think about it. I, I keep thinking this is our child. We get one shot. Yeah. One shot with that child yeah. to do it right. Yeah. And we need to do all that we can to do it right. It, and it's, and it's up to you, which yes. leads us to our truth bomb. Ultimately, you are the one responsible for your child's safety, period. Don't be afraid of offending people. Okay. Uh, do what's best for your child and don't take chances. This is not a gamble game. Don't take chances with your child's life. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning into this episode and we'll catch you next time. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. Thank you to our patrons who make the podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker and search for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron. And check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse.